Man, what a time to be alive. Ladies and gentlemen, there couldn't be a better day or time or season to be sitting in this place, just going through um, the journey of us as African people. I've been struggling with a lot, and I think today, like any car, I've come for my service. Matter of fact, I come for a whole realignment. Um, the new normal always introduces um, a leap of thought, just moving from uh, shifting spiritually. Last week we dealt on certain subjects that today we're going to be taking it to another level. I'm joined in studio by someone I've been following his work for some time and not only following but I've been drinking from the well of his wisdom. I say that because he shaped uh, my approach to certain scriptures and as children of God we cannot be rigid in how we approach the gospel. And I'm speaking as a third generation of dynasty of ministries and here i am today sitting clueless about my own identity in the bible and don't get it twisted i think we are going to touch on uh, certain topics that those behind the pulpit have been knowing but just not ready to uh, 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 explain or indulge so he's fearless um, well researched and by far uh, one of the most sought after speakers of our time in this continent. Please help me welcome Bishop Joshua Maponga. Mr. I'll say Bishop Marara Joshua Maponga, joining me on the new normal. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening to you, Tibos. It's nice we will finally put a face to a name. Did we plan this outfit? Because I left my house like this. <laughs> I think we planned it in the spiritual space. Yeah, I think we did. Telepathic. No, like. There's nothing. No, no, no. When you say it, don't say it in passing. Mm. Yeah, this is the reality. I never, you never found me. I didn't find you. No. So, but it has happened. So, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you, your title of the program is the new normal. The new normal. Yeah. yeah. So maybe this is the new normal. This is. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the fact that you made time for us under these circumstances. Let's 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 be mindful of the fact that we're still under lockdown and these conversations are helping us dealing with COVID-19 better because we are learning to search ourselves. We are learning to find ourselves. Mm -hmm. We've got time now to sit down and reflect. Mm -hmm. And this moment calls us to reflect. How have you been handling the lockdown? Man, it feels like I'm a prisoner in Section B, you know, <laughs> in the Sun City, <laughs> where all of a sudden you wake up in the morning and... Uh, your life is being run by someone else. Yeah. You are afraid of what you can't see. Mm. One time it is airborne, the other time it is, uh, you know, this and that. Lots of sanitizing and uh, mm. kill every bacteria. And I, I mean, I feel, I feel duped to have thought that I was safe in the new system. Only to discover some of the solutions I'm running away from in my history mm. actually are a permanent solution. We grew up with bacteria as Africans, and I don't think we must be mad to be afraid of the bacteria. Are we, over, are we overreacting? To an extent, the Western fear is clouding the African thought. Mm. To an extent. To a large Western extent. Western fear is clouding the African thought. Yes. We grew up with cow dung in our mouths. We grew up sleeping on floors which had mud. We grew up drinking from the rivers when cows are peeing up the river. We just make a small on the on the sand there. Mm and drink mm. because we put enough bacteria in our systems rotten milk mm. rotten beverages the pup that slept and last night managed. no the issue is the issue is you are allowing your body to consume as much bacteria as possible right and this bacteria then activates your immune system right so like, i grew up in a malaria area i cannot suffer from more malaria because i already have malaria <laughs> that's the thing you can't catch this twice if this virus hits you once or if it hits you and it repels, mm. you can't catch it. It means your body just unless host it. unless it is a new bacteria, got you. Which is which is new in the sense of new, right. as it's new on the shop. Mm -hmm. Someone has produced it, but if it is a natural bacteria, right, which comes from the ground, yeah, that certain things have gone wrong in nature, the body is able to deal with what that which has come out from the ground. We're gonna. I called you today because there are certain things I would like us to discuss. You are a third generation of uh, the gospel. Yes, sir. You come from a lineage of uh, ministers and ministers, and so church is not for us. We share that in common. We share that in common. Yeah. However, now, see, you see pastor's kids. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm in recovery mode. I'm highly under construction. Mm. But um, I need you to 
help me with a few things, Bishop. I've had the privilege to talk to all kinds of uh, saints, followers across the world. But this year, something remarkable happened. Um, Christians had Easter at home. Mm. Uh, Muslim brothers are having Ramadan at home. Some were arrested the other day trying to get to church also. Thank you. And they're complaining that the police came into their sanctuary with their shoes on, but they were kicking, uh, yeah. they were kicking alcohol and pop for Africans a few days ago, and Africans did not say our temple was desecrated. So why must Islam have an upper hand to African culture? Tell me about that. We're going we're gonna to talk about that. And, and the, all of us are trying to climatize under this lockdown. We're finding it difficult to do it. I, I understand it. Nobody has PhD in this experience. It's all new to us. Mm -hmm. But you have extensive knowledge in um, some of the subjects that I struggle with. And the first one is the African representation in the Bible. I grew up going to school and Bible study was Jesus, long hair, blue eyes, blonde, right? And in my own grandfather's church, the same representation. And then I had an argument one day with my grandfather that says, if the Jews are the chosen nation, what about me? Because I'm not Jewish. And these are things I'm struggling with because I cannot be a recipient of Abraham's blessing if I'm not Abraham's, if he's, I'm not of his descendant. It's a, it's a long, deep question. Yes, sir. Which, which might not be covered in one, one answer. I understand. But maybe to start off the conversation will be to, to clarify the issue of Jewish and the issue of Hebrew. Okay. Totally separate them. Okay. If you go back in the book of Kings, when the ten nations yes. were taken by the Assyrians. Yes, sir. And absorbed into the world. Yes, sir. Take note. In those nations inclu included were the ten tribes. Okay. The Jews are the only two tribes that remained behind. That is Benjamin and Judah. Right. But the rest of the tribes were taken and mixed in the world. Gotcha. So if you wanted to be academic, which I think is a lazy part of our ministers, is basically to look at all Africans in terms of culture. Get to Nigeria and find the black Hebrews. Go to Eastern Cape and find the black Hebrews. Go to Lemba village and find the black Hebrews. Why do I say that? Yes. Any black nation, that will have symbolisms of Torah living. Okay. One, two. That will have cultures of Torah living, circumcision. That will have emblems of Torah behavior, the colors of the Kosa necklaces, mm -hmm. the blues mm -hmm. and the whites. Yes. And pick up the colors of the Hebrew and Jewish stuff and begin to understand that the fusing of the ten nations into the great African space, though it is happening at a later time of history, gotcha. we actually have the presence of the real Hebrews. Because when you say Jewish, you are only identifying with the two tribes. But uh, when you say Hebrew, then you are talking of the twelve tribes. So by trying to be Jewish, we're ignoring that we're already Hebrew. So you say Jewish is one of one of the twelve. It's two tribes only. Two tribes. Mm. Okay. Je Jacob did not have two children. He had twelve. And 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 you mentioned Benjamin and Judah. And Judah. These are the children of Leah. The, even not make, Rachel. Even makes it more complicated. Benjamin is a child of uh, Rachel. Rachel. Yes. Okay. So Judah, the child of Leah. Leah, uh, but through the seven zipper again. But yeah, but it's fine. Correct. Yeah. That, that's and, and and that's because she was barren, wasn't she? She was barren. She wanted two children only. So the beautiful women don't give birth to a lot of children. <laughs> and she needed some muti to have those children. <laughs> beautiful women don't give birth to a lot of children. No, no, no. But the Leahs of your troubles. Yes. If you stay with them much longer, she will give you Simon. Mm. She will give you Judah. Mm. She will give you uh, uh, Jesse. Yes, sir. She will give you David. Yes. She will give you Solomon. Okay. She will give you Joseph. Even that, Yeshua is yeah. born from Leah of your despise rather from the Rachel of your expectation. So no. learn to live with your Leahs. There, right there, you spoke about Yeshua. Mm. Is this Jesus? The name J appears in our alphabet, yeah. scholastically speaking, okay. only 500 years ago. So it means that Jesus himself never had that name being used on him. So the name Jesus we are using is I'm foreign. Just, I'm just talking as a scholar. Okay. How that impacts 
on you, that's another story. If you want information, I'll give you raw as it is. 100%. So the name J, G, J, Jesus, yes. only appears on our alphabet as of 500 years ago. So and the quest, way before 1,500 years prior to that. So the question is, if on the Hebrew charts and on hieroglyphics and on Italian writings and Greek writings, J is not there, what is the agenda of the Catholic system converting from Yeshua to Joshua? And as if that is not enough, the first rule of academic excellence in terms of translations of scripture, okay. you don't translate a name. You don't translate a name. It's a crime. Mount Carmel remains Mount Carmel. Hence, slavery was the biggest crime to mm. take away people's names. Moses and... remains Moses. Right. You don't translate a name. So if you teach me as an academician and say, this is the rule that you must follow. Right. Then how come when I get on Yeshua, the, the name is translated to Jesus and it's non-consequential? Do you think there's an agenda to dilute the true scriptures of what the Bible is supposed to be? Was there an agenda to even minimize African significance in the Bible? If we can go back on the text itself, you would find that the European does not appear on the text. Let's agree on that as a start-off point. The only time you see the European appearing on the text is on writings such as the Romans, which is a New Testament phenomenon. Is that Paul? Herod. Okay. When Yeshua was born, he was being taken to be counted. By, who? by the Roman Empire. Then the Romans start appearing in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. In fact, they don't appear as much except as oppressors. The crucifixion of Yeshua happens in the hands of the Romans, mm -hmm. who are the Europeans. If you look just on the crucifixion weekend, yes. as to who crucified him, who carried the cross, who buried him, who you'll did? end up with two criminals and, and Yeshua dying between two thieves in the East and in the West. And Africa being at the center of the cross, we have thieves from the east, we have thieves from the west. The question is, how are we dealing with the Chinese? How are we dealing with the Americans? But that's more at a spiritual level. 100%. But in the history space itself, Joseph of Arimathea, Simon of Cyrene, and etc., people who come to rescue Yeshua on the cross are fellow black people. How so? Si si Simon was from? Cyrene. Cyrene is Sudan. So this is true... In uh, your text. evidence of yes. there were Africans at the time of crucifixion. Uh, really? But what could be their uh, presence be there for? Was Jesus their brotherhood? or? Uh, we will need to, at, um, uh, yes, I hear where you're going. We will yeah. need to look back into the birth of this young man born in the, and by the way, Middle East only becomes Middle East as of the 1950s when the Suez Canal is dug to separate North Africa with what we now call Middle East. Correct. We are literally separated by a canal. But the platonics and the, the formation of the continent, mm -hmm. Africa includes the entire Middle East. 100%. Hence we say Africa and Middle East. So Middle, what we call Middle East is actually a political North. thing. It's supposed to be called North Africa. 100%. For practical purposes. So he's okay. born in North Africa. Jesus. So Yeshua himself. So we want to understand how does a, a black boy born in North Africa mm -hmm. leave Africa and go to Europe and come back with blue eyes, blonde hair. <laughs> and then you ask me, is there an agenda? If you don't believe there's an agenda, then tell me and quit your profession as a media person because yes. advertising means nothing. Yes. Because how can you package the Messiah, in the same look of the oppressor. And then hope that the oppressed will not look you as related to their savior. And fighting and killing you will mean I'm killing the same blood that my savior is born out of. Tell me psychologically. Which then makes me ask the question, then who did he die for? The question of the death of Yeshua must be, we must step back again. Because it looks like he died for the black people. Because if he died for all of us, and he has taught us love, how come the people who brought the re European religion, because I want to argue on that later on, yes. that Christianity did not come to Africa through the whites, but through Ethiopia. How then do we justify the colonizer becoming a Christian, but acting like a devil to the Christian? He came here with a black devil on picture, same picture, if, yeah. you, if you had flipped up the two pages, the blue-eyed Jesus here, right. white man, 
on the same page, behind the page, there's a, or next to him, there is a, a monster there with, with ears. Yeah. Only of late if they started painting him red. But in the older books, there's a black guy next to him with the horns and, that's the black and the big that's tail the black devil. and the big tail and the fork in his hand. Yeah. And we're all told that this guy on the left, that's the devil. And guess what the devil looked like? African. And this one on the right is the savior. Okay. And guess what the savior looked like? He appears at the age of 12 and causes controversy. First appearance. Then he resuscitates at 31. Mm. What happened within that... Uh, at, at, at between, zero, between zero and three, four years old, yes. we might not be able to point exactly the date. Okay. But an angel appears to them and says, take this boy to the land of the people. Yes, sir. And where is the land of the people? I could go to town. When Abraham dies, before he dies, sorry, yeah. he says, My, uh, I will not want to cause chaos here after I'm gone. Mm -hmm. So he picks up gold. He picks up Myra. And he picks up Frank incense. Mm. And he gives it to the sons of Keturah, the black boys. Okay. And read the Bible in the Genesis. And he sends them to the east. Then there is silence from Genesis. The next time you see wise men from the east, guess what they are carrying? Myra. Gold. Frank incense and gold. Yes. Myra, to, to clarify that this is a prophet. Frank incense, impep, to cleanse the air because he was in a pigsty. Gold, the insurance policy mm. for the trip that was waiting for them to go to Egypt. Mm. So he takes, they take the frankincense in purple, any sure. iPhone. Abandu was a car, they want us to call it Sage. Yes. Because they are more Twitter, Twitter driven audience who will believe in. <laughs> We're not going to call it Sage, we're going to call it in yes. that's, what, that's what it is. In purple, <laughs> not, yeah. Close off. So they bend. It, because it wasn't a pig's diet, too much bacteria. And I hope that speaks to the corona space we're right. moving into. But many of our environments where we're living are, need to be sanitized in one way or the other, whatever chemical, whatever natural herbs that you can use. But yes. we're rushing to the 12 years. So Impepo was used immediately to sanitize the air. Myra to anoint him with mm. the prophetic ministry. All right. Gold was his insurance policy for daily provision. Okay. And these are the sons of Abraham through the black wife, Keturah. Yes, sir. Who bring back the gifts that their forefathers had given them to give it and inaugurate this gentleman mm. as the Messiah. And they wrap him in swaddling cloth, the emblem of death, and sacrifice he would live after that. Lying in their own mats in the night, the same angel comes to the wise man and says, please don't go back home to the European, yeah. to Herod. He will kill this boy. But they went home using another direction. The same angel comes a few days later to Mary and Joseph and says, Herod is angry. He's coming for this boy. Take him to the land of the people. And guess where that was? Back to Egypt, to his people. So you tell me, this boy grows up not far from here. From where I live here, you cross the Limpopo. Sure. You cross Zambezi. Sure. You cross Congo River. The next biggest river is Nile. 100%. So he's four, he, he, was, he grew up four rivers. Away from here. From here, from where I'm sitting. Yes, sir. Tell me if there are Europeans there to start with. Two, we educated him. He grew up here, dancing with us, yeah. eating with us, mm -hmm. heading cattle with us, being an African. Sure. I will shock you. Okay. At the age of 12, yes. he walks up into the temple to argue with the elders. I have a question for you. Yes. Who had taught him? The theology that he baffled the had Jews a, yeah. in he Jerusalem. Was, he was labeled controversial from the age of 12. By so, who? So to have the ability to cause controversy, you must have started or been grounded or schooled somewhere where you accumulated this knowledge mm -hmm. that causes controversy, not to your colleagues, not to other scholars, but to the elders of that time. You would not want to, maybe let's not, let's not beat about a bush. Yeah. Africa gave Yeshua to the Jews. Africa gave Yeshua to the Europeans. Africa is a direct progenitor, the mentor, the teacher 
of what we have now come to call Christianity today in its adulterated form. So the why, founder. So why when Christianity is brought back to Africa, we have to stop acknowledging our ancestors, we have to change certain practice that reduces our cultural and ethical values. Why did it come with this package that doesn't resonate with being black or being African? Your language is perfect. When you go buy bread in plastic, yeah. you will be a fool to cut the bread together with the plastic. Intelligence tells you to remove the bread and throw away the plastic. The branding and the packaging of Christianity was purely colonial. Anyone who refuses that, go back to school. Mm. It was purely colonial. Yeah. And now that we are here as Africans, all I'm asking, the serious academicians and the serious theologians who want to engage, how do we separate the plastic from the bread? And don't force the people to eat the plastic. What do I mean? Don't force the African to worship the European way. Don't force the African to dress the European way. Mm. Don't force the African to behave like some TV ministry that is in the States or in Europe, mm. filling up our churches with drums and the Holy Spirit only comes when the small little organ is playing and it's on rods and on strings. Okay. Then the Holy Spirit comes. Yeah. Because apparently if you hit the drum, Jesus will run through the door and demons will start coming inside. Yeah. If that God cannot deal with the African, yeah. then he never created him in the first place. Uh oh Okay, preach it now. So, have we been deluded? Is it? Are we now living in a state of delusion, where we have called ourselves worshippers, but the actual, the instrumental way of doing it, it's not truly expressed out of our identity. I even want to challenge Christians fundamentally, and I'll say this loud and clear. Let yeah. it echo through the ceaseless ages of eternity. Yeah. Jesus, Yeshua, never asked anyone to worship him. So where does it come from? Worship the Father. Yeah. So what was, and once we talk about the Father, yeah. to the Africans, what's the name of Jesus in your tribe? Which is? Oh, don't, you feel, yeah. don't you feel funny? In your language, don't you, I mean, psychologically, don't you find that you're actually mentioning something that you don't have in your Zulu? <laughs> Can I ask you, what do you call the creator of the universe in your tribe? Mudimu. Don't you find that interesting? That you have an experience with Mudimu, but Jesus remains as a foreigner to the subject. And yeah. why are we obsessed about this Jesus? Yeah. Because he represents the new colonial euphoria and epi the epitome of what we want to become from the system. Okay, now we are in lockdown. Uh, living under lockdown has caused a lot of people to reflect and people are tired of being fed the idea of this being that is out there in the heavens and looks down on mankind who has sinned, come short of his glory, who's not worthy of being identified as the children of this being. And that guilt created under the pre premises of, call, of being called sin, has divided the church, where there are those who, I wish there was some uh, thermometer that measured how holy you are, like some holy thermometer, because the church is divided by who sinners are mm. and who is holy, who has more grace than the other. Mm. You know, I happen to know that you are in a club on Friday. Therefore, I can sit and say, this one has, is far from being a recipient of God's glory and grace mm. because I have evidence that two days ago he was selling a bag of weed and drugs. Mm. This is And he was carrying someone's wife in his car. Thank you. When he sees you carrying a bag of weed. And based on that, they, they, they far from actually knowing who God is is for their life they need to be washed and cleansed because they are full of sin don't you think that has kept people away from churches because the idea of sin yes we have to repent i get that and i put that on my insta all the time but the idea of painting people that are created by the likeness of god and label them sinners i struggle with that firstly to start with i would want to challenge you mm. if your forefathers as they European Christianity teaches you that they are demons. Okay? Yes. Once they die and you dream about them, mm. then you are talking to a demon. You must go to church and ask for holy water to cleanse you because your demon has visited you. I don't want to work on the theology of that. I okay. want to work on the side of cognitive dissonance. 100%. If your forefather who gave birth to your father is a demon, then what are you? 
a mini demon waiting to become yeah. so immediately you cross this line you're going to join the world of the demon sure and if the african can be mad to think that his history is demonic how can his life be less than the evil that he comes from that's where maybe sin begins to move into that space okay i'll make it simpler for you because i know you're coming from a christian background sure a dog gives birth to a dog a donkey will birth a donkey then why will god give birth to a human Because it extends to say we are in his likeness. I'll, ma I'll, I'll make it easier for you. I'll make it easier for you. Okay. If what our father is like, yes. we cannot become, then we are not of our father who has made us. We are of the demons of which we have been taught we are. Okay. So if we believe the same biblical narrative <laughs> that says we are children of Yah, then why are we listening? To the first question that was asked in the book of Genesis, which we have not yet answered. Which? Where are you, African? Number one, Adam, where are you? Number two, have you committed the sin? Number three, have you spoken to the snake? And the snake in this time is any form of deception in its European colonization and forms of spirituality that have come. Mm. And question number four, who said that you are naked? <laughs> so you need to find out the Genesis question the African has not even started now. Mm to go back to the book of Genesis and say, our father is looking for us. <laughs> Where are we hiding? We're hiding behind politics, hiding behind religions, hiding behind economics, but we are being sought for to an extent that we've started hiding away from the one who is looking for us. And we cannot, we cannot begin to have a conversation with our father as long as we are hiding behind Eurocentric from forms of mindset. You know, I want to pause right there. When we get back, um, I, I'm going to throw this I lost my grandma in 2009, and prior to that, I've always been taught, leave the dead to the dead. The first time I lost somebody significant um, in my awoken state, I think at 2009, I could start arguing a lot, and I could challenge some of this doctrine that we were fed. Mm -hmm. And I started saying, but wait a second, why do we have uh, the idea that they are gone and we are told that we must erase them? But when you visit people and other families, they've got family trees. And these family trees, they help you to connect with where you're from. And by the way, your, your father and grandmother are demons. But when you go to pray, God of Abraham, God of Jacob, God, is the, Jacob the, and Abraham still the, alive? Exactly. That's, that's what I struggle are with. You not, is that not ancestral? Is that ancestral communication? Again, or maybe, maybe I'll wait for the next. Please. Episode. But again, let's be clear. Yeah. That when an African calls on Maponga, Marara, Mujena, Fumujena, you know, Nokwara, Nduma, Tovera, Murenga, you know, I am not worshiping them. It's sacred history that helps me to connect with where I come from. Yeah. And the preservation of that history is included in moments of prayer. Okay. Therefore, you cannot detach me from my history and hope that I'll worship the God whom I don't know, who was not with my genealogy. Even if my grandmother used to be a demon or she used to be a witch, but through her, I have become. So on, on this set, I'll close off by saying, your grandmother lies in the grave, but she's buried in your bones. Mm. We're coming right back. This is the new normal. As you know, we're going to be talking, um, tackling some few issues. What we're just doing is serving some starters. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Bishop Marara Joshua Maponga is my guest. Send in your questions right now. You know the handle at IMT Bo Touch, and you can get this every Sunday on BET. We're coming back. We're going to wrap up with two of the questions from our followers, but I want to make a disclaimer, ladies and gentlemen. We, we were just penetrating the, uh, with our topic today. We're not dealing, uh, we haven't completed this volume of, 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 of uh, Bishop Maponga being here. I think it's, it's series and series after series where we were going to unpack to get to a point where we are able to walk independently as fully equipped, I like what you said, our thoughts, you said something, our spirituality 
controls our controls our thinking mm. patterns mm. and what we believe controls how we behave and we're going to get it right i believe god is going to use this vessel to help us to get it right he's here for a reason he's not here because he has nothing to do he's not here because he cancelled any other appointments that were less significant he's here because this is his destiny to ensure that this information permeates and it gets into your skull so that when we walk and present ourselves in boardrooms we walk as royal beings mm. not mm. as these give me handouts taking three months of a break from my installment while you can still charge me interest. All you have done is added the burden on top of a burden. We got to break away from that. I, 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 I... You, see, this, you get me angry, Tibus. Yeah. You, you touch on critical issues. Yes. Which end up as theory. Yes. I mean, you read your black book. Yes. This is where Christians can particularly get me fed up. Because they read that text and they don't understand it. Okay. We are a royal priesthood. Yes, sir. Did you read? Yeah. We are children of a king. Mm. We, we, it's nice to read these things in church. Mm. But can I ask you a question? Please do. Then why are you offended when one amongst you wakes up in the morning like myself and then I make a declaration? <laughs> say, I am. Mm. Why are you offended as a Christian? Mm. Say, I am. <laughs> I am royalty. Correct. I am of royal priesthood. Yes, sir. Who ordained you? Where are you coming from? Where do you get the power to say that? The same scripture says we are of a royal priesthood. Why are you offended? But it, it means for me until again we begin to translate yeah. these biblical theories into practice. They remain as memory verses in our Sunday schools. And they never transform us into what we really must become to I, face up the situations we are facing. I like that. I would like to leave something to help us uh, extend the baton for the next episode. And this question here is going to lead to our next episode. TRC failed. I think Truth and Reconciliation, I was in literally about age of eight, nine at that time. It was a joke. Uh, we saw of course, Desmond Tutu cried a little bit yeah. here and there. Yeah, mm. it was the best Twin Saver. Is it Twin Saver? <laughs> the, the brand. That was the best Twin Saver commercial. Mm. Um, On the contrary, I think, I think that was a, uh, that was a single ply tissue. Not, not double ply. Not <laughs> single ply. Because at the end of the day, yeah. actually we remained with more evidence in our hands mm. than we had intended to attend to the, to the, to the sure. issues in our rear hemorrhage. I, I, and I, and I want to throw this. What then, and I don't believe, uh, I don't want to even raise the subject of there has to be some compensation. I don't want to go there. But do you think <laughs> the argument um, or what needs to happen for those who are aware of these atrocities and crimes committed to what's African people. Again, what, again, what, I want to drum it hard. Yeah. Don't, don't say to me on any other day, Tibos, yes. that you believe in the Bible when you don't believe in it and you don't mean what you say. Because believing in that text yeah. means that you must follow its pretext. Okay. First rule, when you take another man's land yes. or you buy it from them, you only have 50 years to work on the land. Mm. After that, return it to its rightful owners. Mm. That's, 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 that's biblical. Text. That's biblical. Yeah. If, if, like Zacchaeus, yeah. a thief of note, when he finishes the conversation in his private room, yeah. He stands outside and says, ladies and gentlemen, if there is any man here that I have robbed and I've taken anything away from them, mm. please raise your hand. Hmm. I will pay you not once, not twice. I'll give you four times yeah. of what I had taken away from you. Now, there is repentance. Yeah. You want to talk about TRC? Yeah. Then we need to read the TRC from the perspective of the Zacchaeus true repentance. How can I find you, Tibos, who have stolen my car? You've stolen my car. Yeah. Then I find it with you. And you say, yeah, my brother, yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> it's, not, it's unfortunate to you. It's fortunate to me. Have but we... since I've stolen your car, please allow me to keep it. So what is taking long then to annul such injustice? The political figure has been given a doggy bag to keep his mouth shut. And before, before any... I beg to be challenged on this 
before any political leader assumes an office in an African parliament, mm. I want you to tell me where does he go for the last three months before he gets into power. Mm. I want you to keep me a record of how many hands they to shake, how many phone calls they to receive, how much of international support directly or indirectly they were told what agenda to maintain mm. when they get into power. Mm. And ultimately, the most painful question, according to Mukweng Mukweng, show me the one who paid the bill for the campaign, mm. and I'll tell you the policies that will be implemented. Woo! That brings us to a pause of our episode today. Um, and I say pause because we'll continue with this. Man, my mind is fried. It's barbecued. Bishop Maponga is not your average guest, ladies and gentlemen. And there's no better time to have this conversation. But before we close, Bishop, if you were then to give us a dose for the next few days till we reconnect, how do we work on our minds? How do we work on our spiritual being to influence the way we think and correct the way we've been projected? How mm. do I look at myself in the mirror and see a king? How do I look at myself in the mirror and see a queen? How do mm. I shy away from the need to have um, Caucasian partners to qualify my board or my business as worthy or uh, uh, capitally attractive to, 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 uh, to, to appease those who um, make judgment of what qualifies a Fortune 500 company? Mm. I want to get to a point of not just self-sufficiency, but I want to appreciate the, the white man out of the abundance of who I am. I don't want to appreciate a white person out of the lack and the deficit they feel in my space. So when I walk and shake your hand, it has nothing to do with what I need from you. Mm. It's out of appreciation. I, I, I might have to quick keep that question for the next episode, but I'll answer you from an overview. Okay. Right on top of the clouds. Please. The first estate that you have is the estate of your mind. Yes, sir. So I want you to maybe take this. I'm um, coming from the Farmers of Thought Institution. Yes. It gives me a good landing strip. The first piece of land that you have is your mind. And take note all these estates. I'm going to share with you three of them. Mm. They all grow grass on them. Mm. And the first one is your hair, which is your grass. Mm which protects your estate that hangs between your two ears. Okay. Which talks to your software on the mental level. Sure. Only when you're in charge of your mindset can you move over to the next piece of land mm. that hangs between your legs. Okay. What quality of seed are you planting? And what quality of seed is being planted on you? Mm. Well, this speaks of posterity. This speaks of continuity. Mm. This is not for lease. This, and if this is not fully owned, we say the genitalia of a drunken man and a drunken woman does not belong to them. Mm. It becomes a play field of anyone who is sober. Woo. Rape cases have happened between male and female Okay. when the mental space has been tempered with in mm. terms of consciousness. My God. And many people would rather live in permanent intoxication so that they are not aware of their genitalia. I'm speaking at a highly political level. Go ahead. That in the drunkenness of our politics, we've forgotten the value that hangs between our legs. Okay. It is difficult, therefore, to give people land which is underneath their feet when they don't own the land that is above their shoulders mm. and they don't have power over the land that hangs on their loins. Mm. Contraception, vaccinations, reducing of population, is all a middle land battle that the West is cashing in on us, pumping our women with contraception and giving us vaccines that reduce the population. Jesus. So the African right now, as we are discussing, even in politics, yes, sir. we don't have control of our reproduction. Someone has an interest at what hangs, the furniture that hangs between your legs. Mm. And they can control that because the furniture between your two ears does not belong to you. Ooh. So giving land under our feet without ownership of land between our two ears will vandalize the ground underneath us. My How God. do we then reach that level you're asking me about? Mm. You're asking me at the third level. How do I maximize on my business and on my output? 
I think that is given. If firstly I can be allowed, I come to you in this generation as one of you. Yeah. Who has been born amongst you, educated by the best of you. Yeah. Suffered with you. Yes. Been in the trenches with you. Okay. I understand you. I also have a cell phone. I have a handle. I have an account. I can be spoken to. Yes. Because I'm with you in this generation. Yes, sir. But my best, my business while I'm still here is if it is possible, stop, let's stop discussing the outcomes for now. Okay. Let's just raise the argument a little bit and say, are we thinking about this? Have we processed it yet? Yes. Are we in ownership of our mental faculties? Mm. Then the rest of it. Now I can conclude with a verse so that even the Christians can be happy. All right. <laughs> Seek ye first. Woo! The kingdom. The kingdom. Of the heavens. In the beginning, God created the heavens. Yes, sir. Of expectations and dreams. Yes. Keep your head above the air. Because you are conjured between spirituality and physicality. Okay. So seek ye first. The kingdom. Mentality. Not governments. Kingdom. There's no way in the Bible to say the government of God has come among Aye. us. Until we understand how a kingdom operates. Where's my wallet? I want offering. Hey! Vis-a-vis -vis how parliaments and governments work. Seek ye first the kingdom Woo! and its purity. Yes, sir. Its righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. <sighs> yeah? So, <laughs> this kingdom. The greatest war ever fought in the world is between your two ears. Oh, oh, I have, I got to change my top because I'm sweating. If you hear me coughing tomorrow, I don't have Corona. I was releasing. I'm wet where I'm sitting because I'm the type when I know I decide. I can't make a decision if I don't know. And nobody has ever heard me say this. I walked away from a partnership of the gin that I used to produce because of the very same principles where it dawned on me that this partnership, you are the one on stage, but the value chain, you don't participate. Mm. And as a, as a result... You are good it, as a face. You are as good, yeah. With a newspaper on the corner of a big office. Yeah. So people have never heard me say this. As a major shareholder of 51% of my gin, based on principles, I said, I either get it all or I walk away. Because I realized two conflicting worlds. Mm. You are not going to dilute who I am because of the right price. Mm. This institution here, I want to thank you because you are helping me to... I actually just affirmed part of that decision was based on the fact that I can't be at conflict with what's between my ears. Just because the price is good enough. But, but you are blessed. You are blessed. Because your conscience mm. started guiding your decisions. Mm. Others will come and say half a loaf is better than nothing. Mm. So stuff the blacks that are in the system as long as my paycheck is guaranteed. Never. Nothing else matters. So Never. it takes a conscience of an awoke person, yes, sir. conscious person, yes. who can say, well, I am not worth this much. Yes. I am worth that much. Correct. And the one who is oppressing you will never donate your freedom to you. Hey, please say that again. The one who is oppressing you will never donate your freedom to you. Woo! Ask Mali, ask Senegal, ask Guinea. When they told the French that they are walking away, the French put cement into their sewage system. Including Mozambique. Including Mozambique, and they call it excess water. Mm. It happened in Haiti. When Haiti said, French, we want to break away from you, the French destroyed the infrastructure. The infrastructure. Mm. Kids died. Can we hear about genocide. What happened to the Jews in Germany? Mm. But we don't hear. Can I, can I just throw a curveball? Please do. Allow me to be a minister again. Yes, sir. The Europeans, I'm quoting Elder Farrakhan. Okay. The Europeans must be worried. 
when they know they're dealing with a God of justice. Mm. You better tremble. Mm. 20 million Congolese later. 25, 30 million blacks in the great Atlantic mm. later. Wars on the entire globe from Peru to the islands mm. to Haiti yeah. to Tahiti mm. to Samoa yes. to Jamaica. Okay. The building of the trail roads in Britain mm. on the backs of the black people. Mm. South Africa, you rape this whole nation of colors, as we call them here. Mm. Why product? of rape cases, unspeakable. Mm. Our mothers came to work in these European kitchens as maids. And you converted them into prostitutes mm. and slaves for 400 years. And yet you preach that God is just. Yay. He is fair. His judgment is going to be questioned. He's a God of justice. And me as a black man, I look at you as a European man with this justice God whom you are sharing with me. Okay. And the Negro old song bursts in my spirit. Okay. How long? How long mm. shall the black man continue to suffer? And when God finally comes to have a conversation with justice, okay, with the blood dripping hands of the European. The gold and the diamonds that are hanging on the crowns of the queens from Kalinan, here in South Africa. Mm. The wealth of art and literature hanging in the libraries of Europe. Mm. Bones of African leaders who were cut off and are being displayed in the museums in London. Mm. And some of the European guys and occultists are drink, still drinking wines from those skulls. Rituals of highest order, which we cannot even discuss on air here. Mm. And yet we preach that God is just. I have a question for the European. When will God show justice for the African? Woo! I think that's good enough to think till we meet again. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been real. Bishop, thank you. We've closed four times. <laughs> We're becoming like the preachers. conversation continues. We've closed four times on this show. The, in, a good preacher says, in, in closing. In closing. <laughs> in, in closing. <laughs> in closing. Bishop, you're a vessel. You're a, you're a, one of the rare voices of our time, which I, I'm, I'm very, I'm fearless. I don't think anything, nothing is going to uh, harm you. No weapon formed against you will prosper because your job in this world, you didn't apply for it. You are called for it. And many are called, but a few are frozen. And we have to get it done. Mm. Thank you for being... Blessings. Thank you for blessing us tonight. We honor you and we appreciate you. Asante. God bless you. Bless you too and your viewers out there. It was nice having me here. And I remember, yes. it, this one is a good Twitter. I don't do one night stands. Mm. So we must do it again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Till we meet again, ladies and gentlemen, every Sunday, 7 p.m. on channel 129. My name is Tibo Touch, and thanks to my guest again, Bishop Marara Joshua Maponga. See you and have a good evening.